Hello everyone and welcome to Design for 3D Printing. Today we're going to talk about one of the fundamental flaws and misconceptions that people have about 3D printing, which is the idea that a 3D printed part is less strong than a molded part. This is a common misconception, but it comes about from a large misunderstanding of process and design. This is a typical kind of injection molded design. This is a, a simple I-beam sort of part where you can imagine these outer tongues being compressed. So imagine pinching this outer side until the part breaks. This pillar would snap straight across here like you were breaking a twig by compressing these two panels. Now, this is how you would design it for injection molding. And the reason you do it like this is because injection molding cannot make thick parts. It can't make large fat pieces because they would have to be filled entirely with plastic. And when those large fat parts are ejected from a mold, they shrink. So molds are not able to make really thick parts. So you design a part with very thin uh, edges and walls here. You have this nice little X shape pattern on the inside that gives it plenty of strength in both directions so that when these outer edges are compressed, this pillar does not break. Now, that's totally fine if you're injection molding this. But the problem occurs when people take a design like this and then send it to be 3D printed. And the common misconception is that they expect the 3D printed part to be weaker than the injection molded part because the 3D printed part, when printed, has layer lines. These layers are built up and when this outer edge is compressed, it snaps right along the layer lines because they introduce what's called a stress concentration on this outer edge. Now, they are correct. The 3D printed version of this part is inferior to injection molding because of those layer lines, even when the process is fully optimized. But it is not the fault of 3D printing itself. It is a fault of the designers because they attempted to 3D print an injection molded design. You wouldn't attempt to machine an injection molded design. You wouldn't attempt to try to make a, an aluminum airplane out of wood. You use the correct design principles for the uh, process that you're going to use. And designing for injection molding where all the features are thin is not a good design practice for 3D printing. So how do we make an equivalent part that is optimized for 3D printing? And a part that, again, can take the compressive forces out here on the outer tongues, uh, uses the same amount of material, 4 grams, um, but does not snap at the same level as a 3D printed version of the injection molded design. Well, you change the design and you get away from these thin rims and instead take advantage of 3D printing and its ability to create large round surfaces. Instead of having this simplistic ribbed design that the injection mold requires, you instead create a nice high surface area design that cannot be injection molded and has many benefits over the injection molded design. Because now not only does it look better because rather than a highly angular face, you now have this nice round face. And since this geometry is round, the stress concentrations on the layers are less and there is more surface area further out to the side here so that when compression happens, there is more material holding this part together. So actually, this part would have a very similar strength to the injection molded part of this. And the 3D printed version of this piece would be far stronger than the 3D printed version of this piece. So this is just a way of using good design principles and designing for your end process. And if you look at this also, you'll see right now we have eight grams. This injection molded design was uh, uh, four grams when it was all alone. And you can see here it's fully solid all the way through, so we're not cheating. We'll go ahead and delete that part. And now you'll see that the 3D printed part has the same amount of mass, the same material usage, but there is more material in better places, making this part just a better optimized piece in general and if we were being really clever, we are actually able to make it a composite because we could place infill into here. We didn't because we wanted it to be fair and use the same amount of material as the mold. But the wall thicknesses are the same as the injection molded part. The amount of material is used is the same as the injection molded part. But this piece would be as strong, potentially even better than the injection molded part because its moment of inertia is just uh, better designed than a typical crossbeam like that. 
So hopefully this helps you inform you how to better design for 3D printing. Do not attempt to 3D print an injection molded part. Design a 3D printed part, print a 3D printed part, mold an injection molded part. Each process has its place. Neither one is inferior. They are simply different. Please like and subscribe to this channel and let us know if there's other topics that you'd like us to talk about in future. Have a good day.